Now we will see that we have two kind of mirrors. We have two kind of reflecting surface that is the mirrors. One is the plane mirror. Other is the spherical mirror. As it is clear from the name that this must be having a straight plane surface and this will be having a curved surface. So, spherical mirror is that which has a curved surface and plane which has a plane surface. So, in physics whenever we uh, start with a plane mirror or spherical mirror because in ray diagrams we will be drawing them. So, how to uh, this thing uh, draw them in physics? So, in plane mirror what we see we draw a big line with the small oblique lines on it. So, this is how you are going to uh, signify the plane mirror in this chapter. And spherical mirror, we have two kinds of spherical mirror, one is like this, other is like this. They are actually the two sides of spoon as you can see that the upper side is called as the concave mirror or you can say it is it just resembles the concave mirror and the lower side is convex. The concave mirror is that in which the reflection occur from the inner side and outer side is shiny and polished. So, this is how you are going to draw concave mirror and convex is that from where the reflection occur from the outer side and the inner side is polished. So, this is the convex mirror. So, two kind of mirrors you will come across in this optics that is the plane mirror that means a straight line with small oblique lines. Spherical mirror is that which has a curved surface. Curved can be this kind of curve that is the you can uh, just uh, uh, this thing remember this with the uh, uh, this thing the above side of spoon. So, the reflection occur from the inner side and this is the polished surface this is the concave mirror and the convex one is that in which the reflection occur from the outer side and inner side is the polished that means the lower side of the spoon. So, this is what is a plane mirror and a spherical mirror. Now, uh, depending upon the size of sources, depending upon the size of sources that means what is the size of source that we have a source from which the light is being emitted. So, we uh, depending upon the size of the source we classify the sources into two kinds. One is the point source other is the finite source not infinite it is finite. So, how you are going to signify point source in the ray, ray diagram we will just put a dot. So, whenever you have a dot and the ray of lights are uh, coming from it. So, just uh, you should this should click your mind that it is a point source. So, you are going to represent it by dot. I am just putting the brackets here not to use in the ray diagram it is just to enclose this dot. And whenever you are talking of finite object it is denoted by this sign that is the arrow. So, whenever there is an arrow like this and the light rays are coming from it, so that means it is a finite source. And one more important thing like I have drawn this arrow to the, the pointer pointing upside you uh, like you also have to draw in the same manner, do not draw in an opposite manner like if you draw like this it means something else in the ray diagram. So, whenever I am just talking about the finite source do it like this not like this. Because whenever you are pointing the pointer up or point, uh, pointing the pointer down, it has it signifies different meaning in the ray diagram. So, do not get uh, do not confuse in that case, just draw a finite source in the same way as I have drawn in this way, right. So, these depending upon the size of sources, I think it is clear that we have a point source which is denoted by dot, we have a finite source which is denoted by the arrow which is pointing upside. Now, what about image? We know that image is formed, you know that where the image is formed, image is not formed randomly anywhere, it is formed at certain place and there should be a certain condition which is which should be fulfilled in order to form an image. See image is formed, image is formed where reflected rays meet or appear to meet. So, the point where reflected rays meet or appear to meet is, uh, is that point where image is formed. So, depending upon that we have two kinds of images, 
we see two kind of images one is in virtual image other is in real image so what is the difference between two virtual image is that first we'll start with the real image real image is that it is formed when reflected rays actually meet at a point so when reflected rays actually meet at a point the image is said to be real virtual image is that when reflected rays do not actually meet at any point but appear to meet but appear to meet that means we uh, hypothetically we assume that they appear to meet at certain point but otherwise they are not meeting and uh, you must be thinking that what kind of definition i wrote for real and virtual image don't get confused when i'm going like just uh, do the points as i'm telling you but the time i'll draw a ray diagram these points will be more clear to you so uh, for uh, this moment you should only know that image is formed at that point where reflected rays meet or appear to meet <clears throat> so we have depending upon that we have two kinds of image when reflected rays actually meeting at a point that means there is no hypothetical situation they are actually meeting at a point so that kind that image which is formed at that point is real and when they are not actually meeting they just appear to meet at certain point they are said to be virtual real image are always inverted that means upside down inverted means suppose i have uh, suppose if i if i talk of myself suppose i'm standing like this i am a source so my if my image is inverted that means i won't be uh, this thing formed in the same way i'll be formed upside down that means legs up head down so that is something called as inverted image so suppose this is my object so if i say that it forms an inverted image it will be formed in this manner you just regard the, that uh, this pointer is in head and this is a uh, foot it's right let's say so when it is inverted that means you're going to see upside down that means it is just uh, inverted but virtual image is always erect suppose if i uh, talk of again of myself if my image is virtual then i'm like i'll see myself in the same manner that means head up legs down but if uh, my image is going to be inverted then i'll say upside down that means leg up, legs above and head down so this is what you mean by inverted and erect and moreover you know that real image can be obtained on screen we can obtain them on screen but virtual image can't be obtained on screen so whatever images do you whatever images we see on in a cinema hall they are or they are all obtained on the screen so that means they are all real and they are all inverted and in them the reflected rays are actually meeting at a point so the, those all images are real got it so this is what is a real and virtual image you will be more confident uh, like uh, on this topic when we'll discuss the ray diagram when I, the time i'll draw a ray diagram you will be more clear with this points right and one more question i would like to discuss with you that is very important you often get a question like this in paper you get a question that what happens to a light which falls normally on the surface so let's say this is my surface and i told you that what happened to the light which falls normally on the surface normally means perpendicular so there may be a word used perpendicular in the question and there may be a word normally so you should know that both of the both of them means the same so this is my normal ray so they have asked you that what happened to this ray which falls normally on the surface so you are just going to retrace its path that how the reflection is going to take place in this case so just look at the board carefully that where it gets reflected it just retrace its path it just retrace its path that means it is reflected along the same line and in this case there is no normal ray because it is it is it, it is itself perpendicular and we know that perpendicular ray is a normal ray so that means angle between the normal and the incident ray or the normal and the reflected ray is always obviously going to be zero so if somebody ask you about to point the angle of incidence and angle of reflection you should be clear as it is retracing its path so obviously angle of incidence is zero and we know that angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection so that means again it is zero this is very important question you get uh, this question for, for, for two marks in your paper
So this is what when light falls normally on the surface, then what uh, like could trace the path for the reflected ray and moreover what is the value for angle of incidence and reflection. So you should be quick with an answer that it is going to retrace its path and angle i and angle i r is equal to 0. So this is what is the basic thing which we are which will be requiring in order to make the ray diagram. I think it is clear two kinds of plane mirror you know how to draw them you know depending upon the size of sources how to draw a point and a finite source you know where the image is formed and what kind of images do we see and moreover the important question which I discussed with you that what happens when light fall normally on the surface. So now it is time to draw a ray diagram because we are uh, already done with the basic terms also and basic laws also and about the mirror and the sources also. So we will be just drawing the ray diagram now. So we are first we are just going to draw a ray diagram for plane mirror and what kind of source I am putting, I am putting I am using a point source. So let us make first plane mirror, you know that we make plane mirror like this a big line with the small oblique lines and as I told you we have a point source. So let us say this is my point source. Obviously, if it is a source then many light rays will would be coming from this, but uh, whenever you are making a right ray diagram we do not have to mess up everything just uh, make use of two rays, just make use of two rays of different uh, like uh, like the rays which are emitting they, they can be a straight rays and they can be striking the mirror at certain angle only these two kind of rays you will be able to see from the source. So do not use many rays just use two rays because minimum two rays are required in order to draw the ray diagram. So let us say that there are rays which are coming falling normally like this and I will write M because this is my mirror. There may be a ray which is falling at certain angle. So let us say this is point of incidence, let us say this is also point of incidence. Now as we as I told you that whenever the light falls normally how, how it uh, moves after reflection, we have already discussed it retrace, so that means it retrace its path. And what happened to this ray? We discussed here that when light falls, it gets bounced back, same angles, the same thing we are going to do here. So it gets reflected like this. Let us draw a normal ray. Let this is be normal ray. This is angle of incidence. This is angle of reflection. So, so can you see that uh, like uh, the, do you see that reflected rays are meeting at any point? No, we cannot see because you see that one reflected ray is being reflected in this direction and other reflected ray is moving in this direction, they are not meeting at any point. But if we just produce them hypothetically behind the mirror, like if I produce this reflected ray behind the mirror like this and this reflected ray is this, so if I just uh, elab uh, this thing extend it behind the mirror, so it will get extended like this. So can you see that they are meeting now? Yes, we can see otherwise in real situation they are not meeting this, this reflected ray is going in this direction and this reflected ray is going in this direction they are not meeting. But when, if, when you are extending this rays behind the mirror, so you see that they are uh, meeting hypothetically. So this is the image, this is the image. Now what kind of image is it? Is it real? Reflected rays are actually meeting or reflected rays just appear to meet, they are not act actually meeting. So we see that in this case reflected rays are not actually meeting, they just appear to meet at certain point. So this kind of image is called as virtual image. I think you got it now, the difference between virtual and real, real ones are those when reflected rays are actually meeting. Suppose if we have a condition when these rays are actually meeting, they do not they don't meet actually in case of plane mirror, we will observe in case of spherical mirrors, but otherwise if we talk about plane mirror they do not actually meet. But when you extend them behind the mirror, we see that in a hypothetical way that they are meeting at certain point. So that image is called as virtual image and we know that virtual image is always erect, that means same. Uh, like if head is up and legs are down, so the image will also have the legs uh, head up and legs down. And moreover, what kind of thing you can see that plane mirror always always form image of same size. 
that what what will be the size of the point of source that is going to be the size of the image and moreover the distance if we see of uh, source from mirror is always equal to the distance of image from mirror so i'll write let's say this is m so that means om is equal to mi that means this distance is equal to this distance this is my i this is my o and this is my m so om is equal to mi and moreover we observe a certain mo uh, another kind of phenomena that the image formed by plane mirror is always laterally inverted is always laterally inverted and uh, like have you ever seen this kind of image yes we see in a daily routine whenever you see yourself in a plane mirror the mirror the looking glass which we use at home for to dress up is all plane mirrors so that is the image which is for which you see these kind of characteristics you see whenever you are dressing up uh, dressing up at home uh, in plane in uh, the looking glass so this kind of image is formed so what do you see observe in that case you see that you are erect like you are if you are standing like this you are going to see yourself in the same way uh, in the mirror also and moreover you look look uh, like same size suppose if you are uh, fat you look fat if you are thin you look thin if you are tall you look tall if you are dwarf you look dwarf so that means you look uh, uh, look uh, like same size and moreover the distance of object from mirror is same from mirror uh, distance of image from mirror suppose you have a mirror and if you are moving towards the mirror then your image is also moving towards the mirror and if you are moving away from the mirror at the same time your image is also moving away from the mirror it's not like that that if you see yourself in a mirror you are moving away and your image is still there it's not like that right it happens in a horror movies but not in a real life so whenever you observe yourself in a plane mirror the distance of your like if your object your object from mirror will be equal to your to the distance of your image from the mirror and moreover one interesting phenomena what you see is the laterally inverted now what is this laterally inverted we call this phenomena as lateral inversion we call this phenomena as lateral inversion what's that it is that whenever you see yourself in a plane mirror then your left hand side becomes right hand side and your right hand side becomes left hand side so this kind of thing is called as laterally lateral inversion or laterally inverted and this is a feature of the plane mirror the plane mirror always so show this kind of thing that your left hand side becomes right and right becomes left so lateral inversion is a phenomenon when let lhs becomes rhs or vice versa when object is exposed to or you can say object is kept in front of plane mirror this is the specific characteristic for the plane mirror so whenever you get a question like this that draw a ray diagram for the plane mirror so what you need to do is there is no need of writing a big paragraph just draw a figure like this and don't forget to mention these five characteristics these are very important the ray diagram without the characteristics uh, is in, is an incomplete answer so if you will draw a ray diagram and if you uh, will not draw arrow like this as i pointed like this then your ray diagram is just going to get cross so don't do this kind of mistake draw a well labeled ray diagram indicating the angles the normal ray everything and along with that you have to mention the characteristics also because the characteristics are one which will make a make make an examiner familiar that what kind of image you th think about that what kind of thing uh, what kind of image this kind of mirror is forming whether it is a plane mirror or it is concave or convex mirror you need to do in a same manner so this is what is the characteristics and i think you got it the lateral inversion also it is a phenomena when lhs becomes rhs or vice versa vice versa means like in a similar way lhs becoming rhs your rhs is again becoming the lhs when when object is exposed to plane mirror so this is what is in later inversion now we'll draw a figure uh, like as i draw a figure for a point source i'll just make you draw a figure for the finite source also because otherwise it is not included in your syllabus but you must be thinking in your mind that what kind of image you'll form for a finite object right so we'll just discuss now just look at them. 